Case number three, uh, called non-constant growth dividend or non-constant dividend growth. Essentially, everything else that we have not covered yet is in case three. Um, so let's look at this first example known as the non, no dividend example. So in real life, some companies uh, pause paying dividends. Maybe they're expanding, they need to retain more money uh, out of their uh, annual profits. So how would we evaluate uh, how much a share of stock of such company um, is worth if there are no dividends uh, expected for a while? So in this example, we have a company that is currently paying no dividends. You predict that after four years, it will start paying dividends for the first time and the dividend per share will equal 80 cents per quarter paid out at the end of each quarter. You expect to com uh, the company to grow at 5% per year indefinitely and adjust its quarterly dividends accordingly in order to reflect its earnings. The required rate of return is 12%. What is this company's stock worth today? <coughs> so. 80 cent dividend um, paid after four years, nothing until then, paid at the end of that first quarter. After that, it will be growing at 5% indefinitely or in perpetuity. So it's a growing perpetuity, which is delayed. It's a delayed growing perpetuity, right? Delayed by four years. There is four years of nothing. And the discount rate is 12%. This is per year. <clears throat> okay? Um, because we will be working with a perpetuity with quarterly cash flows, everything needs to be adjusted to reflect the quarterly uh, frequency of the cash flows. And so the 5% per year growth in dividends uh, will need to be divided by 4 to get the quarterly dividend growth, 1.25%. The same thing should be done with the discount rate. The required rate of return is 12%. It doesn't say uh, for which time interval, and as always, the default is per year. So the quarterly discount rate would be one quarter of the annual discount rate. And so 12% divided by four gives a 3% discount rate per quarter. So now we know which numbers we should be using. And uh, let's start with the timeline. <clears throat> so we have today, one year from today, which is four quarters from today. Then uh, another one year of quarters, one more, the fourth one, the fifth one, and so on. It keeps going. So there is nothing between today and uh, the first dividend, which is paid at the end of the first quarter after the first four years are up. So we would place... 80 cents basically at the end of quarter 17, right? And then after the first dividend is paid, uh, all future dividends will be grown by 1.25% every quarter forever, right? So we have a delayed growing perpetuity, right? Which starts with 80 cents uh, is the first cash flow. And uh, what we can do is use the growing perpetuity present value formula. What this formula would do for us is add all of the perpetual dividends up, all of them, kind of replace them with one number, right? Um, the important thing is when we use the growing perpetuity formula, which has in the numerator the 80 cent very first dividend, so that's the dividend in 17 quarters, right, from today, divided by quarterly discount rate minus quarterly growth rate in dividends. When we use this formula, it will find sort of the discounted sum of the perpetual dividends one quarter before the very first dividend. So this is actually something that also came up uh, that was covered, you know, in chapter six, where the growing perpetuity formula came up. Uh, but here it becomes very, very important. So once again, the important detail 
is to realize that when we use this growing perpetuity present value formula, it gives us the discounted sum of all dividends one time period before the very first dividend payment. So it gives us essentially what we can call the price per share in uh, 16 quarters, right, from today, 16 quarters to the, from today, or in four years, same thing. So that's uh, one quarter before the very first dividend in this endless sequence. Okay, so just, you know, keep in mind that this is actually important. And that's going to be important when, um, you know, in the second step of the calculation in this problem. So this is step number one. You plug in the numbers, 80 cents divided by 0.03, that's the quarterly discount rate, minus 0.0125, the quarterly growth in dividends. And the calculator gives us $45.71. Is this the answer to our problem? Is this the price today? How much you would pay for one share today? No. This is how much you would pay in four years, right? Because that's what the formula calculates for us. It's the present value of all dividends, but not today, which is where we want to be eventually, but in four years. So it's essentially what the price will be in four years. And now you can simplify our problem like this. It's as if on our timeline, we have just one number and nothing else. It's all blank. We have just simplified this problem tremendously by replacing all those endless growing dividends with just one number, which is equivalent to all those endless growing dividends. $45.71 at the end of the fourth year counting from today, which is end of quarter 16. So technically we should be talking in quarters rather than years in this problem, because all calculations, all numbers in our calculations reflect the quarterly frequency. Okay, so this entire, um, you know, first timeline with many, many dividends starting end of quarter 17 are now replaced with just one number. There is nothing else in the future after $45.71. And now we can proceed to step number two. You know, just a simple discounting of $45.71 back to year zero. So that's how we would find the price in year zero, today's price per share. Um, so it's like chapter five, you know, very basic uh, present value of a single cash flow. So we take $45.71 and divide it by one plus the quarterly discount rate, one plus 0.03. The whole thing then raised to the 16th power, right? So 45.71 is in the numerator and the rest is in the denominator. And 16 reflects how many quarters we have between now and 45.71. So we get $28.48. <coughs> um, let me just quickly review um, this in the financial calculator. Um, so let me bring it up mm, right here. Let's turn it on. Let's clear just in case to make sure nothing is stored from earlier calculations that I did with my calculator. Um, so 45.71, right? 41, uh, sorry, uh, back, 45.71, we make it negative. Um, that's our future value, right? So it's right here in four years or 16 quarters to be precise. So 16 quarters, 16 is our N and the quarterly rate is 3%. 3 IY compute present value, 28.48, $28.48, right? However, on my slide, uh, I'm also showing another way to do this second step using the cash flow keys. So let me walk you through what I have here. <clears throat> uh, again, financial calculator, let's clear everything. <clears throat> let's start all over. 
cash flow. Start by pressing the cash flow button. Cash flow zero. There is nothing. No dividend that you would receive right away when you buy the share, right? So you save it as zero by pressing enter. And then you press the down arrow key. Okay? So we just did this. Cash flow zero equals zero. What's cash flow 01? Cash flow 01 means the very first one in the future. So our future is counted in quarters, right? In quarterly increments. What is the end of the first quarter cash flow equal to? It's zero dollars. And in fact, we have zero dollars at the end of the second quarter and the third quarter and all the way until the end of the 16th quarter. So we have... 15 quarters of nothing, zero dollars. So first cash flow 01 is saved as zero dollars, enter down, and then the frequency of that is changed from the default of 1 to 15. 1, 5, enter down. So if you count how many quarters in the future we have without any dividend, it will be 15. So what's cash flow O2? This is the next dividend, the next cash flow, end of quarter 16. Uh, actually, it's not even a dividend. It's the sum of all remaining future dividends from that point on. Remember, remember 45.71 was the discounted sum of all perpetual growing dividends after this point on. So cash flow O2 is 45.71. 45.71 enter down it's only once we keep it at one the frequency press down again then press the NPV button then put the quarterly discount rate of 3% 3 enter down compute same answer $28.48 right so you can solve the second step two different ways. One, you know, using um, you know the future value button and IY in computing the present value PV. But the reason I have just explained this other solution, the cash flow keys, is because all other examples that we will look at on the next slides will be using these steps. And so I kind of want you to try to remember that cash flow keys is the way to go with uh, this kind of um, problems. Because this way we are sort of fitting any type of non-constant growth dividend problem to cash flow key um, calculations. Okay, so this problem is done.